I guess the day has finally come to put the transmission, the freshly rebuilt transmission, back in a coachman, get it uh, where it'll go under its own power again. I've done a really good job at delaying and putting this job off because I don't, it's not a fun job, but I'm out of excuses. So it's time to get to work, get this thing back in here, get it all put back together. Hopefully it all, everything goes smoothly. You are going to help today. In some, some way or another, you are going to help. Okay? And she said, sure thing. Um, <laughs> Alright, I already got some cardboard on it. The transmission's I already slid it underneath. Uh, I got one more thing to do to uh, get it ready to go in. Uh, some tools, cardboard to lay on. And I did go ahead and take the uh, dog box off inside. We can go back in a minute. Come on. All right, dog box is off. There's that big 454 Chevrolet engine. And uh, yeah, there's no transmission hooked to the back of it. But there it is way down there. And the uh, torque converter is over there somewhere. I'm gonna, still going to slip that on the front of it. And uh, get the thing lifted up in and bolt it up. If you haven't seen the earlier videos of when we took the uh, transmission out, I only have the, uh, the coachman, I only have it jacked up so far. It's, it's in continue, uh, continuous use, so it's level, it's comfortable inside. I could jack it up a little bit just for today, but I'm just, I'm just not going to bother. Um, the challenge is, uh, you know, to get the transmission out. Uh, you know, I used the transmission jack to get it down, but then I had to push it off the jack and, and slide, them out, slide it out separately. There's not enough room to take the... Uh, the transmission while it's on the jack out together so there's only so much space there so the trick's going to be is to put it um, I got to lift the transmission up a little bit underneath there and slide the jack under it and then jack it up so that's going to be a little bit of a challenge uh, but you know I'm doing things the way I am I got my reasons and that's just got to be good enough I could do this and I could do that and uh, <laughs> but there it all is one thing I probably should have done was went ahead and put this torque converter on the front of the transmission uh, and then slid it under here. So I could, I could do that underneath here, but I got plenty of room to work. I can just take this cap off, this uh, protective cap off of it. Probably just put a little, real, real thin, a little bit of loop on there just so it's um, a little friendlier to the seal uh, when it goes on the front. Uh, let me get that taken care of. Actually, I don't think I do need to. There's a Looks like there's a little bit of, let's we'll see, maybe I should get a little bit of something on there. Looks like there's a film of, film of something on there. And the assembler looks like they put a little bit of uh, a real thin thing of grease on the seal uh, for the same reason. So there's a little bit of lubrication on there going on a brand new seal. Let's see if we can get this guy up here. that okay it's on the first shaft and there's a second shaft that needs to it needs to drop on well, there it went that easy yeah this needs to be this surface needs to be well below this surface because uh, the flywheel sticks out and this bolts to the flywheel huh. all right hmm <laughs> now what um, okay, if you watch your earlier videos, a couple people did mention, you know, I should have a piece of plywood down here, uh, make it easier for the, uh, transmission jack. It's right around, it's just on the other side of the transmission. I'll have to get that scooted over here, uh, so I can move the transmission jack a little easier. So I did that, um, it will be more handy in the putting it back in process. Taking it out really wasn't a big deal, uh, but I might need that freedom of movement, uh, yeah, with the reinstallation. And we're on a slight downhill, so I didn't want the transmission jack, you know, constant fighting it, constantly wanting to roll towards me. So I did put a piece of uh, uh, a furring strip, a one by three underneath this side of it. So it's kind of sit more, more level now. So it shouldn't fight me uh, much at all. I think we'll be okay. Yeah, now I gotta figure out how to get it up in the air so I get the transmission jack under it. I, uh, I was offered some, uh, some help. I do have help available. Uh, I'm not here. <laughs> I 
I've had help here available a couple of times and I'm like, oh, I don't feel like doing it now. I'll, I'll manage it. Thanks anyway. So I, I've chose to kind of fight this fight myself. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to start somewhere. I think uh, I'll start by uh, uh, prying up on this little lever, little lever system. Got to start somewhere. And what I might do is get a strap in uh, around the tail shaft up to the cross member. Maybe I can use a ratchet strap and just kind of lift it up that way. And maybe I can get something from up here up to the through the dog box and just hoist it up that way. Something like that. But uh, I'm going to start by. Let me just do that. Maybe. Then again, maybe. <laughs> well, I don't know how well that's gonna go. All right, we'll see what I can do here. Maybe I can uh, just kind of walk this up. Enough and get a. Uh, as long as I can get the transmission started under the back of it, I can, I can, sh I can slide it on that plate once I. Uh, let me think about what I'm gonna do here for a minute. This actually isn't going too bad. I found if you find a balance point on transmission, it, you can actually, you know, lean it back, put a board under it, and then I just use a pry thing and uh, put another wedge under it, lean it back, put it there. And I've gotten it up this high just by kind of. Walking it using, yeah, different size stuff. Building block. It's like playing with blocks when you was a kid, you know? I, I, I was good at that, so uh, this is going pretty good, actually. Uh, I'm probably going to need to get up a little bit higher, so I'm going to gonna work on that. I think all i got to do is do something like this here again uh, to get to the next step. I'm going to see what I'm doing here. Just making a, making a thing here. i got to get up a little bit more and put another block under this next one, and then teeter it back and put that uh, increase that and yeah it's just kind of hang on let me uh i need to get this camera out of the way so i can i got uh i gotta work okay we're up a little higher <laughs> i don't think it's still quite enough i'm gonna get that uh, transmission jack uh over here and start eyeing it up we're getting we're getting in the ballpark there we're getting close and we're even higher yet uh, we're not quite, we're close. This is, uh, we still got about two, two inches or so to um, get this plate under this pan. But uh, one thing that made it easier is I can get this, I can get this, um, <laughs> oh, the transmission jack under the back uh, where the transmission mount goes. So I'll just take, um, take over with this. That's the less struggle I got to do. I can jack it up back here for now. And it's easy peasy. Oh, kind of bump into the cross member there. Oh, okay, hang on a second. All right. See, I only got so much room to work here. How's this gonna? Hmm. Let's see here. Will that go under there? Well, <laughs> we might have to back and forth one more time here. Well, we're sure getting up there now. I'm getting low on blocks. But, you know, I'm not sweating or huffing and puffing, so I'm not working too hard. Just uh, taking my time playing with my building blocks. So, you can get up a little bit higher. Still need to get this is the bottom of the pan. This is the plate. We, we, we still have little little ways to go yet. Uh I could do this safely though. I don't wanna I don't want it to all come crashing down and have to start over again. So let's see here. So you're getting to a point there's only so much room to work where when you start jacking it up it starts pushing itself back um that's making it a little bit tricky so um hmm 
What I need is my little, my little jack under the center and jack it straight up instead of all this teetering at this point, maybe. But that's occupied up there. So uh, I'm gonna keep working at this. I'll get it a little bit at a time. We'll, we'll get it up there. Little of that, and then, uh, Hmm. Little of that, and then we gotta yeah, scoop it around and put a little bit more in here. See what I mean? It's uh, there was more room when it was down lower. Now it's getting up there. I gotta mess around with these smaller ones, but all right, we're getting close. We're getting close. I'm gonna step it up here one more. One more and I think I can get it. One of those, one of those, one of those. And let me see here. Oh, we're, oh, we're so close. All right, so close. This isn't too bad. See, I keep this on this uh, on the balance point where I can teeter this back. Okay, let's get it about yay far. I'm gonna put maybe something like that. A little bit more to the front. I think this will be the last step. The last step up. Well, it will be for sure here if I get this other one in too. Oh boy, it's getting shaky. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get it this time. Little wiggle, a little jiggle. All right, we can get this one more in here. I think we'll be able to get the jack under here now. All right. We'll go down far enough. <laughs> we got it made now. Yes, we do. All right, I don't know where we were at there because the uh, I looked and uh, the camera was frozen. I had to yank the battery out of it and restart it. So I don't know where we're at with that. Come on, oh, stay. Don't come falling back now. All right, from this point. Um, from this point, I don't know what. I'm going to have to manhandle this and slide this jack under it. And I don't know what I'm going to do here. Let me, uh, let me mess around here a little bit. But uh, We're getting there. That was half the battle. I'm just going to say this is really sketchy. I hope I, hope I can do what I think I can. I hope I, I hope I can pull this off. I got a pry bar back here. Oh, that's wanting to fall over up there, isn't it? Oh, it's okay, just gently. Just gently. now on the jack and off of these we're there we did it okay all that playing with blocks when I was a kid paid off huh? 
Okay. All right. Let me uh, get reorganized here, get a couple things out of the way, and we'll be right back. Okay, that's better. I got some stuff out of the way. I'm a little better situated. The, uh, I didn't quite position this piece of plywood. Uh, I estimated it. I, I'm a little off, but I, we're going to be close enough. It'll work. We're a little close to the edge here. <laughs> we'll be all right. Um, yeah, the transmission right now is at an angle facing. It's it's not right. It needs to be cranked back that. So if you remember, you know, I showed you this jack before that it has these adjustments on it. So this one right away I could tell it's way off this way so we're gonna crank it and get it kind of in the ballpark for now we'll probably fine-tune it once we get it up there a little bit further and I'm not sure side to side it goes you know it tilts away or towards to you get those two dial pins lined up so I don't know where we're at there until I get it up closer but we're we're, we're in the ballpark this way now we we'll get it up a little bit closer and we'll kind of see where we're at well this up here a little, a little bit better some more wiggling and jiggling and uh, we'll send her on her way up uh, I got this piece of foil I stuck in this where the dipstick kit uh, <laughs> I made my own little homemade plug because uh, you know a few days what has gone by I don't want any critters crawling down in there never know you know I mean mice could <laughs> I wonder if a mouse could have snuck down in a dipstick too with a you know? Well, I didn't have to worry about that. Well, so far so good. I'll give her a little wiggle and jiggle here and there. Uh, make sure we're not... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I better watch out. That might be... Oh, I'm gonna have to adjust her back a little bit. All right, where are we at here? Uh, yeah, you can see that. See, we're pretty close here. This is where the, uh, there's the dial pin. Oh, maybe you can't see that, uh, especially my finger in the way. There's a dial pin there, and there's the hole where it lines up. And then I, above that, I got a screwdriver. Actually, that can help to put it through the uh, transmission and into the bolt hole a little bit. And sometimes you just, you know, wiggle it a little bit, wiggle and jiggle it a little bit while uh, pushing the transmission a little bit and then you can get like the next bolt the neighboring you know bolt started while you do that that's uh it's uh we're in the ballpark let me get this a little bit closer uh, so we can get a couple of bolts started in it all right we came up top uh i should mention right now if you ever take this job on yourself don't ever 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 force anything at this point of trying to get a bolt lined up and okay you got one started and you're just going to tighten it down to to draw the rest of the draw it up um there, a friend of mine broke the, tra the bell housing on a C6 transmission before trying that. I'm just gonna get one bolt kind of started by a couple of threads, and then I'll, I'll still kind of do some jiggling and moving around and get another one lined up. You gotta make sure a couple. There's a dial pin on each side, and it's critical they get lined up right. And if it's off a little bit, you know, one side can be lined up and looking good. If you go to pull it in, the other side's not going in. You're you're putting things in a bind and it's just you really have to know what's realize what's going on the whole way around the transmission that that gaps coming up even I'm just gonna get one started for now uh, still things are gonna be loose I'm not even gonna snug it if I can get in a couple of threads that just kind of holds its position and then I can get on the other side and see where it's at if I gotta bump it up or down a little bit and get that side but it's gotta you gotta be sure things are lined up before you go drawing the bolts in and um, like I say if it gets tight and don't force it. <laughs> uh, make sure it's kind of finding its way on there properly. And uh, anyway, we're gonna have a look down in here. What was I missing down below? A light uh, that we couldn't see. Here's a. Uh... Yeah, it's gonna be hard to see anyway. One of the bolts. Oh, the dipstick tubes in the way. Here's a uh, one hole. Bolt goes in here. And the other one is uh, over here. So let's see here. We don't look too far off. Uh, let me see what I can do here. Why don't I just leave you guys kind of laying like, like, maybe like that. Will you guys stay right there? Where's my bolts? Let me get a screwdriver down here. 
well it's too it's too long it hits um no that's not gonna line up i can see here and here and here and here i really need the transmission to kind of rotate counter counterclockwise that's uh anti-clockwise for you uh folks across the pond okay um yeah, I'm going to have to go back down. I was hoping to get lucky. I'll have to go back down and do a little bit more adjusting around a little bit before uh, I'm getting any bolts in. It's up a little bit. Just a smidge too high. And it has to rotate counterclockwise a little bit. So, alright. Well, I know where I'm at a little bit better now. So we need to go, we need to tilt it that, uh, a little bit this way, see? Sort of this adjustment thing comes in handy. Which way is it going to want to go? I think it's going to go this way. Yeah, about like that. And I need to let it down just a wee little bit. Alright. And uh, we give it another shot here. Uh, everything's looking good. I actually got, uh, we did a little special fight with it. We got all the bolts started. Nah, uh, the whole way around the bell housing got it all lined up nice. The uh, torque motor still spins freely. There's nothing in the bind, and this is really an area you really have to watch out for. That the um, and I think this is where my buddy went wrong. Uh, that broke that bell housing. That the torque converter actually wasn't in quite the whole way. Um, it steps on yeah like two shafts one two so whatever anyway it's easy to and i almost made that same mistake i seen it was uh something didn't look right there wasn't very much clearance here and i was getting closer like this is there was still a gap there between the transmission and the engine and like almost nothing here um i'm like that ain't gonna something's wrong i didn't get mine in all the way in either so i'm um, i gently just took a pry bar in between here and put a little bit of um just the equivalent of like pushing on it a little bit and and i, I stuck a screwdriver on one of these things and yeah just kind of worked it worked it and then all of a sudden it went plunk on the rest of the way and i'm like okay now now it is in the whole way so there's uh there's plenty of big enough gap here i can finish going around bolting the trans um drawing the transmission up to the back of the engine tightening that all down um and get these torque converter bolts all put in and that, that'll be it. Then I can set it down on that cross member. I need to go ahead and put the transmission mount on it here. And uh, we can set that down on the, uh, uh, set that down on the uh, cross member. <laughs> okay. And uh, we can probably move on to the next steps here. But uh, yeah, we're coming along okay here. All right, the hard part is done. We are, we are in really good shape. Anybody that does one of these, a transmission job, knows that this is a good place to be we got all the bolts um in and all tight here's the uh these top two that one and uh that one top two are all in and tight and uh, the next one's down that one there down there holds a actually holds a little bracket that holds that wire it goes down to the uh, kick down switch and this one over here is where the uh, mount for the dipstick tube uh right uh, the bracket comes off dipstick tube right there the bolt goes through it and and holds the uh, dipstick firmly hopefully we'll be putting some fluid in this after a while so it's uh probably a little empty right now and the two bottom bolts down there are tight as well so all six transmission bolts are nice and tight and uh everything's still the torque converter is still free and spins we'll have to put the torque converter bolts in all right i got the torque converter bolts here it looks like they use some maybe red loctite on those i don't know if i have red i think i, I don't have blue I never uh, doesn't matter i'll probably wire wheel these up put some loctite on them we'll get the um get that torque converter up in there yeah those bolts in there and that'll be done we can put that cover the cover back on that and i have the where is it where is it hang on a second here we go um uh, i did sit there there was that stud that goes down through the hole yeah, you know, the transmission mount has that stud on it sticks out it goes down through the hole of the cross member it's down through there uh i could um put the washer and nut on it but um it's just sitting there it's not quite um i had all the weight on it and i had to back it off a little bit because i forgot till the, we put these bolts in here uh this needs to be a little bit loose sometimes you need a little screwdriver or something where is it dang, dang right i brought it sometimes you gotta get the hole kind of lined up 
work it a little bit while you get the other one in and then uh, tap it a little bit one way or the other and it uh, also goes up and bolts there's four on each side so you have two here and two up above and then we gotta do the same over there. once all them bolts are all tight and uh, in and tighten then I'll go ahead and tighten the uh, transmission down or uh, set it set it uh, it's only up like a week I mean just a tiny bit I'm gonna put the rest of the weight back on it and put that nut on it and then this jack can come out of here we'll we will be done with that part of it uh, we can move forward we'll be getting the, the drive shaft back in it oh some other things hooked up um, up here but though this is a good place to be where the jack comes out <laughs> it it really is and uh, for for the most part mainly it's you know bold remarried to the engine uh resupported by the cross member that's that's the main thing it's in uh and secure so this is a good place to be right now happy to uh got this much done all right uh <laughs> you like that huh uh we're down to putting uh putting the drive shaft back in it the uh uh the uglets all seem really good they look like they've ever run dry they've all, always been kept greased they real, felt real good took the caps off they all they all looked real good so uh that one in the center so i guess things in uh in, you know the u-joints are in really good shape so i'm not going to bother replacing them if they were even questionable if he um i absolutely would have but they seem in really good shape so uh yeah get this thing underneath there all right we're going to jump ahead here a little bit to speed things up uh, i took two videos to get the transmission out i want to get it all together in this video so uh, we're gonna jump ahead. We're gonna need a couple of things. I'm gonna need my uh, my grease gun. All right, and uh, and they did get some blue uh, thread locker uh, for those. It's a it's the medium strength. Yeah, I don't want to use the red Loctite. That's the uh, that's the permanent. That's super strength. If it ever has to come back apart again, that could be a problem. Medium strength will hold them good. Uh, and if it has to come back apart, it's no, it will all right as you can see here well uh let's take a quick look here the uh the drive shaft i did uh jump ahead and, and put it back in uh if you want more details on how that works uh you know go back and watch the previous videos it's pretty much everything is in reverse order so how i took the drive shaft out is kind of you just do the same thing only backwards um uh, this is a good time here i'm gonna go ahead and um you know i got my grease gun because we're going to go ahead and give these all the u-joints um a shot of grease and there a, there's a spline up there uh it's a two-piece drive shaft so where they meet um uh, there's a spline but this is a good time to oh we gotta check this real quick okay the rear differential i mean while we're addressing the drive train from the transmission the drive shaft that comes back here to the differential um uh, we need to check we want to check the fluid in here. There's a plug in the side here and just a 3 8 drive, uh, square drive, you know, ratchet will. Now, this should be enough fluid in here that you can put your finger in here and uh, you should be able to get it wet with fluid. Well, just a wee little bit. Um, I'll try my smaller finger. Put my pinky in there. Yeah, there's some in there. It could probably take a little bit. I um I have some. This is also a really good time to uh, have a look at things. Uh, whether the axle seals are leaking, the uh, the bottom here would probably be wet, uh, and that could be. This has uh, rear drum brakes, so if that's ever wet down there, that could be from a like the rear uh, uh, wheel cylinder leaking brake fluid or the axle seal uh, leaking gear oil. So that'll look dry there. The other side looks dry and uh the seal on here yeah this all looks dry there's nothing seeping or you know, it's not wet down here at the bottom so nothing uh, appears to be leaking back here so that's good and uh we're gonna oops do i not have the cap on tight we're dripping a little bit so and this is uh 75 90 weight um, high performance gear oil valvoline brand just happens to be maybe it'll ease up the uh 
There we go, until it starts dripping out. All right, I think that's full. All right, we'll get our plug back in. And uh, that's taken care of. Alright, and in, probably didn't show you in the last, or in this video, I don't know if you spotted those or not, but of course it's in a, one of the videos somewhere you've seen where the, you've seen where these had a grease fitting, so we just hook her up and pump it till you can usually hear the, uh, it's squirting out and you can see it coming out some of the caps in there. Oh yeah, here she comes. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, it's kind of oozing out the cap. So yeah, you want to do that and give her a couple more pumps. All right, that one's greased. All right, here's that uh, the spine section. This is where the back uh, half of the uh, drive shaft joins the front uh, the front half. So there's a spline in here. There's a grease fitting right up here. So we're gonna wanna make sure to get this uh, the this universal joint. Where's the uh, fitting on this one? Oh, it's back, back up in here. All right. Uh, I see it squirting off the caps now. Oh yeah. And what it does is it forces some of the older grease out. The new grease going in forces some of the old grease out. So there we go. That one's got some fresh lubrication. Come off of there. Let me see if I can get up here, get this on here. Oh yeah, here it's forcing the. Let's do it on that side or not? But here it's forcing old, old grease out the front of it here. See, <laughs> so that's what we want. Let's give her a. Let's give her a couple, a couple extras. All right, that spline is good and lubricated. Come on, sometimes these seem to really lock on nice. All right, we just got the one more up front. All right, last one. All right, there we go. I hear it squirting out now. It took a few pumps, but oh yeah see i don't know if you can see there yeah see that old grease coming out right here and right here so enough new grease until you can see old grease being forced out okay that's done all right we'll go all the way up here to the front end get this little job out of the way uh finish bolting up the torque converter uh, i went and got my better wrench uh that's a regular craftsman uh 15 millimeter is what these are and um, it's a 12 point and a standard length uh, my snap on wrench is a six point which uh, grips better and it's a little bit long it gives you a little more leverage for uh, breaking stuff loose and tightening we can get our guten tight with, uh, with my snap on a little bit better so uh, all right let me get some thread locker on here and uh, get these bolts in all right i got the first two in and uh it's just hard working with the camera right here in front of me. So we'll, maybe we'll do the last one together. See, there we go. Got some thread locker on there. And uh, it's actually kind of tricky. Yeah, you guys are kind of in my way for this. So we'll get this last one in here. She goes. All right. Give her a little, little tightening up. All right. I'll give her a couple of these. All right. Uh, I'll have to get you guys out of the way to finish this. 
Here's a very important part I did not forget to do. Uh, I need to do that uh, now. The This is what the transmission shop gave me. It's a kit for, it has a fitting on the end of it. It's a kit for flushing out the transmission cooler uh, lines. Uh, and you just empty this, you blast this whole can through. And then uh, once all the liquid's gone, it says, just continue to blast it because um, then it kind of, there's the liquid cleaner, but then there's like aerosol. Um, to finish like pushing it all out and evaporating it uh, whatever it's just uh, uh so i need to these cooler lines are still up here i've not connected them yet i need to put it in one end and then um the other end i'm just gonna wrap a rag around or something to you know filter and catch the uh any nasties that might come out of it i just had a jar or something to a piece of tube and i could just run that into but anyway i'm gonna blast that through i don't know if i'm gonna record that because if there's any spray, it's not, I don't know if I want to get that on my camera. So uh, maybe if I can get it set up, uh, we'll see. Well, this is pretty nice. That fitting, there was a universal fitting, but then there was a threaded fitting uh, that fits most transmission lines. And it did, it screwed right into the one transmission line. So there's no, shouldn't be any squirting spraying all over the place. And then I just have this rag wrapped around the other line to catch. Uh, catch any gunk so I'm gonna see what happens here let's see if we can push this here <gasps> ooh, 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 ooh. I shouldn't have, I should maybe I should have <laughs> no <laughs> I use this cardboard to lay on maybe I should have got a drip pan Ugh, man is that nasty that is some nasty stuff um let me hold that up I don't want it to run on the my other piece of cardboard i could know i could be about done with this piece uh <laughs> that is some bad stuff yeah i wouldn't want that running into my new uh my new transmission well let's see um <laughs> i'm gonna get a drain pan i'll be right back i don't know what i was thinking i, I should have been expecting that right <laughs> All right, uh, where are we at up here? Okay, all right, let's let me hold this up here. Let's try this again. Man, oh man. Okay, seems to be doing seems to be doing its thing. That has a that's a pretty strong smell. I don't know what that kind of cleaner that is, but it's cleaning. Yeah, I would have hated for that nasty stuff that was in that system to uh, get all into my new freshly rebuilt transmission. You know. Yeah, it's, it's looking much better. What I might do too is uh, I have that air compressor in the garage. Uh, I might run the hose out here and just give that a good blast through. Uh, just to make sure all the cleaner's out of it too. You know, want that those lines, that system nice, good and blowed out, good and dry. 
I think I will take that extra step to do that. That's empty. That's done. Oh. Well, my light died, but uh, oh, come on, get in there. You see that up there or not? All right, I think it's just vaporizing. Uh, I need to get that rag off of there because it's just blowing the, not just blowing the crap out of this uh, in the rag. Yeah. We're good. All right, I'm satisfied. I can get them lines hooked back up. And uh, everything else is hooked up up here. We got the uh, the vacuum modulator hoses on it. The uh, dipstick tube is in it. So uh, I'll hook those lines up and this side is done. They are on and tight. We'll be putting fluid in this thing here shortly. Yeah, my good old uh, air compressor there, we blew that out with, uh, and I have this end. I kind of cheated, I put my own little piece of uh, soft copper tubing on. Uh, it's usually straight, but it's easy to bend if I needed to, so I was able to reach up at the same angle as those, uh, those lines were made. That made that easier. But look at this, watch this. Okay, watch how, see if we can stir up some of that. Yeah, watch this, I want to stop here. Okay, look at all the, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's some nasty stuff. I'm quite happy to have gotten that out of there. I think I'm down to three quick and easies, and then time to dump fluid in it. And you have been so helpful. <laughs> Your help has been appreciated, girl. It's so, it so much has, it has. <laughs> okay, we're all done on this side over here. I took care of those three things. Uh, the one was the uh, the shifter, took the shifter backed up, and the uh, the plug for the uh, kick down switch, and uh, little brackets up there to, properly to hold the wire up out of the way so it doesn't get the tangled up down on anything. So that's how I plugged plugged in, and then the uh, speedometer cable. So we're all done over on this side as well. I think we're ready to go put the fluid in it. I'm gonna leave this um, this cover off for now. I'm gonna run it for a bit and uh, you know check the fluids and stuff and, and just be able to check to see, uh, make sure there's no uh, no leak from that front seal or the front of the pan. It'll just be easier to see, uh, check for leaks. So uh, once that all looks good, then I'll put the, come back and put that cover on. Uh, let's just keep uh, road debris and you know dust, gravel, rocks out of this uh, this area. So it's uh, not going to hurt anything to, to run without it. Just yeah, you know, just long enough to uh, make sure things look good. But, uh, I think we're going to go up and put the uh, grab a funnel and some fluid. Hmm. This is a uh, this is the exciting part, right? Let's see, put fluid in it. See if it. Uh, maybe this would be better without this extension. I don't know what I did with my. Uh, I have a better funnel. I don't know what I did with it. Will this stay in there good? No, it doesn't even. I like that. It like just fits. Uh, now the trick is not to spill any transmission fluid in here anywhere, right? <laughs> Well, you know, I was fortunate enough that the uh, the transmission shop sold sold me uh, bulk uh, transmission fluid at wholesale price. So believe me, I I got a really good deal on this. And he said to put about half of it in. He said uh, he said it should take about thirteen quarts. He said so, hey, it's whatever, six or seven quarts. He said, and then, uh, of course, the transmission in park. Uh, go ahead and start it up. And uh, start adding some more. All right. Is that about... 
Okay, one gallon was four quarts. Probably almost half another half a gallon is about six. Try to go about six and a little bit more. Yeah, that's uh, about six to seven. Okay, we got a healthy six to seven in there. All right, now if the coachman will start, it's been it's been sitting a while. <laughs> I haven't been sitting all that long. All right, let's set this aside. Maybe I should take a peek underneath and just make sure it's not running all over the place somewhere, right? <laughs> all right, it's gonna take a little bit of cranking to get this thing to start. Uh, it's been sitting long enough that the ga some gases have evaporated out of the carburetor. Uh, this doesn't have an electric fuel pump, so it's mechanical. I gotta crank it over some to get it to pump gas and put it back in the carburetor. So I'll have to crank it a bit first and then we'll give it a serious try. Okay, now we'll pump the gas a few times. Should be gas up in the carburetor now, so we'll pump. Oh, what's wrong? What's wrong, coachman? Did I not maybe working on this thing I've knocked the wire off or something. <laughs> All right, we'll be uh we'll be right back. Alright, I took the air cleaner off thinking maybe I flooded it. Then I forgot the, the, the choke doesn't always. Alright, it's getting gas, but the choke doesn't. Let's 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 give it some choke. this one in this will be 12 quarts he said it should take 13 it should be safe to put this whole thing in right or should i stop early and check it i stop at like 10 or 11 let's go for the whole 12. i don't know trust he knows what he's talking about he said put 12 in it Now, if he was right, it should take a little bit more. But we're just going to stop and check it here. We'll let this warm up a little bit, a little bit more, too. Well, actually, still sounds good from out here. You can hear that exhaust leak inside, though. <laughs> These sound good. It just seems like it hasn't run in a long time. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try something here. Okay. Let's see. What you, this is still on fast idle because it's warming up. There it slowed down. I'm gonna put my foot firmly on the brake. See if it acts like it wants to go in gear. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> it has reverse again. Remember before. Uh, Reverse went out completely. Okay, it's neutral. Oh, and there's drive. Neutral. 
Well, she does look like she means business. Nice. What I need to do is go out, take it out and road test it a little bit. Uh, run it through all the gears. Yeah, that exhaust thing will be the next uh, job. Okay, it, needs, it does need a little bit more. And he said, he said, depending on the size of my transmission core, it may even take more than 13. He says it should take at least 13. All right, I'm gonna get this popped off, and then uh, we'll be back. Well, she's putting off some heat now. It's getting good and warmed up. Uh, that's good. got about 14 in it it still needs a it's still not quite there yet We're just about there. Really, really close. Yeah. It only needs just a tiny bit more. Okay, we are right on the full mark. Very nice, very nice. Maybe we can shut her down and go out and look underneath. That looks good under there from what I can see. Looks good and dry. There's some couple of spots from when I was working and that's other grease. That's WD-40 and just the other <laughs> and it's fingerprints. There's a couple of drops up there, but that's right where I did spill a little bit from the funnel. Just a couple of tiny little drops. It's, that's directly below where the funnel and the dipstick tube was. But other than that, the rest of that cardboard, are, there's like not a spot on it. Not a, let's get it out here. Okay, that was dipstick spillage. The rest of this is uh, just stains and stuff from uh, doing the job. I think it's gonna be okay. Seems to go in the gears uh, solid. Uh, there's, uh, don't see any leaks underneath. Uh, I got some things to put away inside. It's kind of a, I gotta prepare the inside for, for traveling. You put the cover back on my table, put some other things away. I got some tools to put away in the garage. Uh, just a general cleanup of the area and put this project to bed. Uh, not going to road test it, I think, until uh, probably the next video, very soon. I'll get this cleaned up, we'll go take it for a road test, and maybe we'll probably start the next video with that. I'm sure it's going to be okay. <laughs> Alright, thanks for coming along. I'll see you soon.